Well, happy Monday to you, church. We hope you're having a great start to the week. And go ahead and say hi to Josiah here. And uh, we caught him again during lunchtime. So, again, full disclosure, apologize for anything that could potentially happen during this time. And, hey, if you can't tell, I actually get a little smarter sometimes. And I'm not wearing a white shirt this week. But anyways, so I heard a song either last week or the week before that I have listened to numerous times, and actually we've sung it in church quite a few times um, as well. It was very fitting uh, for the time that, uh, at least in our house, that we are are currently living in our stage of life. And I'm just going to read the chorus to you real quick. And the chorus goes like this, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness, My God, That is Who You Are. And it's beautiful because it's just, you know, words that we would use to describe God, right? He is a way maker. He is a miracle worker. He is a promise keeper. And he is a light in the darkness. That is who he is. And so that kind of got my mind wandering. And I actually made a list of the different names and words that we use to describe God all throughout the Bible. And so we're going to start in the Old Testament. And uh, so El Shaddai, that's one that you've probably heard of. That is Lord God Almighty. And it means that he's our sustainer and he gives us everything that we need. El Elyon, the most high God. He's the highest majesty. Um, Adonai, which is one you probably know too. I believe that was a song way back in the 90s. And for some of you that may be very familiar, thanks to my dad, I'm very familiar with a lot of 90s Christian music due to our long car rides that we had going to school. But that one just means Lord and Master. Yahweh. Uh, that one, Lord Jehovah, we hear that a lot throughout the Old Testament. El Alam, the everlasting God, the God of eternity, of the universe, and the God of ancient days. Elohim, he's God, he is judge, he's the creator. Kana, he is jealous, he is zealous. We hear this again throughout the, a lot of the Old Testament where God is a very jealous God because he loves his relationship with us. And so when we put things before him, he gets jealous. Um, Jehovah Shalom, that he, the Lord, he is peace. Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of powers. Jehovah Yira, the Lord, he will provide. Um, and that's, you know, at least my short list for the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we see we hear these words. The Redeemer, the Redeemer, uh, someone who compensates us for our faults, um, he for our poor past behaviors, for our performances, and he makes the amends. Mm-hmm. Uh, majesty, impressive stateless, stateliness, dignity or beauty or royal power, peace, uh, freedom from disturbance, a state of tranquility or quiet from freedom, oppressive thoughts or emotions, brings harmony. These are the actual definitions of these words. The healer, to make whole, to restore original purity or integrity, everlasting, lasting from enduring through all time. Um, tediously persistent. I love that definition of that word, tediously persistent. A king, one that holds supreme position. Righteousness, free from guilt or sin, morally right, eternal, having infinite duration. Lord, having power and authority over others. Savior, one that saves from danger, brings salvation. Awesome, inspiring all or respect due to one's dignity or wisdom. Deliverer, to set free. And then, this isn't really a word, it's just a phrase that we, that we hear in the Old Testament, that John actually does, uh, talks about this, the Lamb of God. And this goes back to the Old Testament where animal sacrifices were used frequently, and the purpose of those was to temporarily cover the sin of those people. And the purpose of those sacrifices were uh, sanctification, right, and having a right standing with God. But all of these words, and even all throughout the Old Testament... Um, We obviously see all of that come together in the most perfect way that only God can put together. And then the last word, Jesus, right? Jesus is the definition of all of these words. Jesus is the meaning of all of these words. Amen? And so when we sing a song like this, where we're using specific words to try and describe Jesus in another way, that he is a way maker, he is a miracle worker, a promise keeper, a light in the darkness, that is who he is. He is also peace. He is also majesty. He is also healer. He is also king. He's righteous. He's eternal. He's our redeemer. He's savior. He's awesome. He's deliverer. Um, Eternal Lord. um, Adonai. We have a whole list, a whole Bible full of words that we try to use to describe God. And we still can't do it because he is just that big and that great. 
And so that song, moving into then in the verses, explains again how big our God is and trying to describe just that, that he is here, he's moving in our midst, so we worship him. He is here, he's always working in this, in this place, any place, so we worship you. You are here, you're touching every heart, so we worship you. You're healing every heart, so we worship you. You're here turning lives around and you're mending every heart, so we worship you. And even when we don't see it, we know that you are working. Even when we don't feel it, we know you're working because you never stop. So you are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Uh Uh-huh. So there you go, church. Just remember that, that our God is constantly moving. He's constantly doing things even when we don't see it. And then when we do, in those small moments that we do feel it, we should give him praise for it. Amen? And we can use any word we want to to try and describe it, and we're still not going to have all the words, but that's the beauty of music. That's the beauty of worship. It just pours out and pours out and pours out. Amen? Josiah, you got anything else to say? Nope, he's just showing off his food to uh, anybody that wants to watch. So we love you, church. We hope you have a great week.